episode of Us Anxious Folk. My name is Lauren. I hope you're doing really, really well. And I was recently looking through my uh, analy- bleh, what do you call it? Analytics for the <laughs> for the podcast. Jesus can't make words this morning. Looking at the podcast analytics. Um, and it's not something I look at often. I look at the numbers often, um, which we're nearly up to 10k listens um we actually will have surpassed 10k listens because i switched podcast providers like i think six months into the podcast and i forget what what the numbers were initially um so but but for the the podcast provider i'm using now uh we are nearly up to 10k which is really exciting i think i'm gonna do a little giveaway when we get to 10k um but anyway the those are the numbers I usually look at. But what I was looking at was the the most popular episodes. Um, and the first one that was the most popular was my initial episode, which was how I recovered from agoraphobia, which I feel is popular for, for obvious reasons. Because when you have agoraphobia, you really want to know how to not have agoraphobia. Um, and so you search everywhere for that kind of answer. So not surprised that that's the the episode that gets the most airtime um but the other episode that was the most popular was the toilet anxiety episode and again i feel like this is for the same reasons that there's not a whole lot of people that talk about toilet anxiety and so when you are suffering with it you are looking for someone who talks about it um someone else who feels the way you do and so I think that's how a lot of people end up finding me because I'm quite vocal about it. Um, But it's also been something that has been the most requested in the, um, uh, the, you know, the various questions I've done about what do you want to hear next on the podcast? Most people say something about toilet anxiety. Um, So this episode, that was a very long winded way of introducing the fact that this episode is going to be about toilet anxiety. Uh, So if that's not your jam, feel free to skip this one. But um, one of the things I have found in all my talking about toilet anxiety is that people seem to think that when they deal with this, that they're the only one and that they're alone and they're weird and they're strange. And, you know, that's one of the most frequent comments I get on my toilet anxiety videos is that people say, I thought I was the only one dealing with this. Like, thank you for for showing me that I'm not. Um, And so whenever I do talk about it, I do it with, I do it with that in mind. (laughs) I think to myself, there's going to be someone out there who this is the first time that they're finding out that they're not alone in this. So if this is you, if this is the first thing that you've listened to on toilet anxiety that tells you that you're not alone, please know. You are not alone. If you are somebody who has a fear of having an accident, lives in fear of accidentally, um, you know, like wetting your pants or or soiling your pants, um, soiling yourself, like has a fear that, um, you know, every swirl of your tummy, every gurgle noise that your belly makes is, is imminent doom you always feel like you have to be nearby to a toilet um you know that's part of the reason that you avoid going out because it's like i can't be sure of where the toilets are you know a lot of people with travel anxiety have travel anxiety because it's like i don't want to get on public transport and not have access to a bathroom if you are somebody who deals with this i see you and you're not alone um there are lots of people who deal with this uh, and you you don't have to feel that way forever. Um, there's not something wrong with you. I think we get so worked up with the idea that we have this toilet anxiety and that something's gone wrong. You know, something's gone wrong in our brains. But I think that we forget to acknowledge the fact that we live in a world where we're showing our best selves a lot like we're we're, we're trying to at least (laughs) um you know we're trying to filter things and and present things in a way that's more appealing we're trying to get more likes and followers and more podcast listens and um 
you know, we're trying to present ourselves in a way and a lot of it's old fashioned, you know, a lot of it is like this, this idea that, you know, our parents had where it's like, you know, things like you have to iron your clothes when you go out so that you look presentable. Like you can't go out in track pants. Um, you know, what will people think? What will the neighbors think? Like that sort of thing. But there's also, um, part of it that's that's new part of it that's been enforced via things like social media like wanting to um appear likable wanting to appear uh like we've got it figured out like we've got it together um wanting to to be seen in the algorithm like there's there's a lot of pressure on us in this world to be presentable, to be okay. And it's something that I think is like insidious, like we don't even really notice it's happening. And so when we have this toilet anxiety, this feeling of like, but what happens if I embarrass myself? What happens if I humiliate myself? We think that that's abnormal and that's weird and that's that's something wrong with us. But I think actually it's a response to living in a world that that is constantly looking for us to be perfect, um, even if it's self-imposed pressure. There's still that pressure to be perfect, and one of the the messages I received just made me weep. Because it was someone saying, um, you know, what if I have an accident um, and someone films it and puts it on the internet? And the thing was, I felt the pressure in that statement. I felt I felt that that fear of like, what if I'm seen in my most vulnerable moment and exploited and exposed and the world sees that I am not perfect. The world sees that I'm not okay and I'm humiliated. And what I responded to that and what a lot of you will have read if you've read my Toilet Anxiety ebook, um, my response to that was, you know, that says nothing about you and it's a snapshot of a moment in your life where, you know, something bad happened and something bad is always going to happen in life. Like every single one of us on this planet is going to have um, a time where we're not well or, you know, where like our bowels don't work properly uh, or, you know, where we desperately need to wee. Like we're all going to have uh, some kind of moment where we're not at our best but actually we're at our most normal uh and to to focus on that one moment as defining the rest of our lives is just it's just going to cripple you like if you focus on trying to prevent yourself being human you're not going to be able to live you're not going to be able to exist in this world if you keep trying to restrain yourself from having a human experience Um, And to live in fear of someone exploiting that, you're giving them all your power anyway. You're you're giving away your right to exist and be in the world. Um, So (laughs) while I understand that, while I deeply understand that fear of of being shamed and humiliated, um, I want to remind you that the, the fear of that is understandable and, and normal, but you can't let that be what dictates your life. You can't let that be what dictates your movements forwards because it's, it's not going to allow you to move forward. Um, but again, that, that speaks to that sort of world that we're living in where it's like there's this virtual um, microscope you know like there's this the internet is just this thing that's become like this this way in which we we want to appear a certain way and we're terrified of it of it seeing us and it's given everyone else in the world a way to see us in a way that we can't control um whereas you know back before the internet it was like only the people who you saw in your everyday life were the people who saw you or if you were a celebrity you know obviously people saw a bit more of you then but 
if you were just a normal everyday Joe, the only people that, that saw you were people in your immediate vicinity. And now with the internet, it's like everyone, everyone can see you. And that is a lot of fucking pressure. That is a lot of pressure knowing that um, or feeling that you are on display for everyone. And so, of course, we feel crippled by that. Of course, we feel crushed by that pressure of everyone watching. But what I want to remind you of and what I what I wanted to remind myself of also and what I had to remind myself of the other day. Who told us that it wasn't okay to be human? Are we telling ourselves that? You know, like since when was it not okay to need the toilet? Since when was it not okay to have functioning bowels or, you know, in my case with IPS, non-functioning bowels <laughs> or dysfunctioning bowels, I should say. Um, when was it not okay to, to need to poop? When was it not okay to need to like pass gas loudly in the toilet? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... These things, you know, we giggle about them because they sound funny and we're, we're taught to giggle, giggle at them. But um, there's nothing more normal than that, than, than being a human that has wind and, and needs to poop and needs to pee. And for a lot of us with toilet anxiety, we've, we've had a period of our lives where we just didn't really think about that stuff. Like for me, for most of my life, I just went to the toilet when I needed to go to the toilet and I didn't really think much more about it. But then I had these years where I just, it was all I thought about, you know, even when I was watching movies, I would like be watching a movie like, um, you know, like a zombie movie or like an end of the world movie. And I'd be thinking like, like there's no public toilets where they they are. Like what? How do they? How do they go to the bathroom? Like what if they need to poop? Like you know? Like I'd just be obsessing. Like it just became this this like thing that I couldn't stop thinking about. Um, and I I forgot that it's normal, and I don't need to put so much pressure on myself to to not have funny bowels sometimes to to not um need to wee like i need to stop telling myself that it's not okay to need the bathroom i do this thing where i would be in the car and i would be like but what if i need to you know what if i need the bathroom when i'm driving there and so when i was like really bad with toilet anxiety it was like i need to get everything out before i leave the house a lot of you will know what I'm talking about. You know, it'd be like, I need to wake up early so that I can poop enough so that by the time I get in the car, I don't need to go anymore and I can get to where I need to go. Um, and I had this obsession with doing that. And it was like, I had to get up earlier and earlier and earlier. And then I couldn't leave the house because my body was like, but I still need to go. Where in my head did I tell myself that it wasn't okay to need the bathroom? Like, to be in the car and to stop somewhere to use the bathroom. Why did I start putting this huge amount of pressure on myself to not be human? This is like <laughs> this exploration into what it means to be a human being has become a big part of my my journey with anxiety. This, you know, this idea of like trying to make myself not have bad emotions or to not have dark thoughts or to not have um you know like a functioning digestive system <laughs> like trying to control everything and trying to make everything a, a certain way I'm just wrapping myself up in this complete inability to exist and it's exhausting and I think I'm, I'm starting to learn how to unravel that. But it begins with reminding myself that it's okay. It's okay to need the bathroom. It's okay to poop. It's okay to pull over the car at a public toilet and go to the bathroom. It's okay to need to wee. It's okay to be like, I'm out with friends and I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> like, it's all right. 
who fucking cares if you need the bathroom just go and the more I remind myself of that the less relevant needing to go to the bathroom becomes you know like it used to be something that really ruled my day and it's a lot less so the more I remind myself that it's okay it's okay to be human it's okay to to have bowels and to have a bladder (laughs) and to have a body that does things bodies do I hope this episode has has reminded you that it's okay. I know it's been a little bit rambly. It tends to happen sometimes when I talk about things that I'm passionate about. (laughs) But I'm really passionate about this because I really, I want you to be able to exist in the world. I want you to be able to take up space. And I don't want you to go through your life scared that you're going to be exposed in some way. Because... When you, when you hold yourself to that, that like fear of being seen, everything becomes really hard. Um, so please allow yourself to be human. Allow yourself to need the bathroom. Know that it's okay. It's okay to have a functioning digestive system. It's okay to have a digestive system that makes noises and needs to poop and needs to wee and, um, you know, all the rest of it. Please allow yourself to have that space today to be a human being and to live in a human body i hope you're all doing well um i'm sending you so much love and so much support as you go on in your human experience i see you i walk with you um and i'll speak to you next time Thank you for listening to the Us Anxious Folk podcast, the podcast for the chronically overwhelmed, perpetually panicked, anxious folk in all of us. If you would like to find more about me, you can find me on YouTube at Lauren Rose or on Instagram at Lauren R underscore Rose.